What is up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will be reacting to why the Indy 500 matters. Um, I feel like this is going to be a good video for me because I have been saying recently that I want to know more about IndyCar. Yes, I'm watching it and I'm enjoying watching the races and like each time I'm watching a race I'm learning more and more as I go along. Uh, but there's still a lot of things that I feel like I should know that I don't. Um, which I have said many times before. So I'm trying to find like good videos for me to get a bit more information um, and one of you requested this video so we're going to get into it, I'm looking forward to it but before we get into the video make sure you subscribe over half of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed. Just hit the bell, it takes two seconds and if you'd like to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks you can also do that by hitting the join button down below. It's the month of May, but it might as well be December, because for motorsport fans, it's like Christmas. Ah, okay. That leads to the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500, or Indy 500 for the more sophisticated folk. It's one yeah. of few events in the year where the hype- I've heard people call it like Indy 500 month, because it just goes on for the whole of May, basically. <laughs> the motor racing god, but like a kind of prince, except mm. a good one, not- this guy. But I'm sure a lot of you, especially those who might be new to IndyCar, are wondering why this is such a big deal. Yeah. 100 mile race around a track that goes left, 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 before you never guess, going left. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway is one chunk racetrack. But how this thing. Chunk. Chunk. Great. Back in the early. Oh, we're going way back. Okay cars was just as strong as it is today, even if it was somewhat remedial. But while races were typically held on the streets of wherever it was that the cars happened to end up, someone eventually thought, what if we had like a sort of track for these cars? That way we yeah. don't run over people anymore. In Indiana business- Anymore. Carl G. Fisher likes said idea, and when he paid visit to the newly built Brooklyn's track in- Oh wow, look at that. Track was like on its side there of motor racing. After all, he reasoned, what could be more logical than building the world's greatest racetrack right here in Indiana? After finding some farmland five miles outside of Indianapolis and some backers to help fund his venture, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was opened in 1909. But 1909. Quite a while back then. Racetrack. Because in the early- What? Life. It had become a bit of a widow maker with a gravel and tar surface that broke apart if you made the mistake of looking at it. So, with people refusing to race- Oh. Cars, Fisher knew that change was required. The surface needed yeah. to be safer. And it was decided that the new surface would be bricks. Three point- Bricks. Bricks were used to create this Goliath. That's why the Speedway donned what? a nickname that still persists to this day. They still call this place the Brick- The Brickyard. Oh, okay. Odd numbers were dwindling. A change in marketing approach was needed, and less events were needed to be run, lest they run out of green paper. On Memorial Day, a single 500 mile race was established and served as the flagship event for the venue. Thus, this is how the Indianapolis 500 was born. Over oh, okay. Changed in the interest of safety, with only a line of bricks remaining that serves as the start finish line. But the race itself as a right. whole remained the same through the 1910s, 1920s. Isn't that what people do when they win and they kiss the bricks? Did I get that wrong? I feel like they do that. <laughs> With the world at war, every bit of- Oh no. Not another one. Kind of the last thing on people's minds. Yeah. However, three years later, when the world was finally about ready to calm down again, the brickyard had fallen into disrepair. Three-time winner oh, of the 500, Will Bashaw, fought like hell to fend off property developers to keep the speedway alive. He found an investor in Tony Horman, who bought the track and- Oh. Okay, the, there are a few things that are popping up here. I'm like, oh, I've heard that name. I've heard that before. However, once the race was thrown off the F1 schedule in 1960, that's when the Europeans decided to come over to play. Jim Clark and oh. Graham Hill would win in 1965 and 1966 respectively, with McLaren and Lotus providing race winning cars and Lotus even turning up with a jet powered car back in 1968. I do like that, that they get like, you, you can have the chance to take part in the Indy 500 if you're not racing in the whole indie series. Majority of that grid ain't American. Some are former Formula One drivers. Yep. Some are former prospects from the junior circuit who almost made it to Formula One. Why are they here then? What is the allure of this race? Well, really, 
history. To win here is to yeah. etch your name into the history books. You put yourself amongst motor racing immortality. Sure, back in the day, it was a bigger challenge, partially because the cars handled like boats, but reliability was a major factor. In them times, telemetry was restricted to a clipboard. It is crazy. Like the first IndyCar race I watched this season was the Indy 500. <laughs> and it was absolutely insane. For that being my first race, I was like, oh my god. The margins are tight. Being just a millisecond off the pace could mean the difference between qualifying and not qualifying. There are only yeah. 33 slots on that grid, and typically more than 30. Yeah, I learned that in the last IndyCar video I did. There's only three, 33 allowed. And if you're 34th or lower in what is called last chance qualifying, you'll be taking an early bus home. Should you qualify, oh. however, you'll be competing in the greatest spectacle in racing. Sure, there might be a million practice sessions throughout the month of May to help you prepare. Yeah. This is it. You salute the stars and stripes before getting into the car, where you'll hear the most famous words in racing. Drivers. Start, your, Start engines. your engines. The clock ticks over and you head off onto the three parade laps. The first <clears> of which is used to wave at the crowd. The second of which is used to warm your car and tires up. And the third is when you silently sh yourself as the green flag. Yeah, that was one thing that I got confused. I was like, why are they doing three laps round? <laughs> which no matter how many times you watch it still looks sketchy as hell but it is completely safe provided you don't develop the jitters like kevin kogan did back in 82. the green flag oh. drops and you're off on a big ass adventure during the opening laps you're settling into the groove but you are also analyzing cars around you what are they doing how are they doing should i hang back yeah the speed that they go at around these ovals just crazy. Like, I thought watching stock cars, for, like, in NASCAR go around ovals was crazy. And then I watched the Indy 500, and I was like, holy crap. How are they not shitting themselves in the car? Like... <laughs> As the laps die down and you start getting into the last 50 laps or so, that's when the decisions become more crucial. Do you keep your cool or do you roll a dice? Keep your composure or do something like make a complete gamble on fuel. Sometimes this doesn't pay off, such as with Robbie Gordon back in 1999, running oh. out of fuel one lap from the end, or it can go the other- One lap from the end and you run out of fuel, that's got to be so depressing. So like soul crushing disappointment is the way I would describe that. <laughs> They save like crazy, but even then, when he exited turn three, Rossi had run out of fuel. He oh no. Meant to carry him toward the finishing line, and Munoz, who was flat out the whole way, could not catch him. Running virtually half a lap wow. with no fuel is one hell of a way to win it, but it ain't the only way. In 2011, J.R. Hildebrand had it made. In his debut run at the 500 and first full season in IndyCar, he was about to make debut run possibly could. He had four turns left, three turns left, two turns before becoming an Indy 500 champion. And then he came across Charlie Kimball, who was a lap down. Oh no. Hildebrand tried to go around the outside. Big mistake. <gasps> but having momentum, he oh no. Weep on by to take a famous victory. And Hildebrand went from hero to zero within the space of a corner. Regardless of how you. That's crazy. I got chills all over my body. Where driving prowess, whilst good, also has to be combined with brains and bravery. Screaming yeah. along at 240 miles an hour, whilst also calculating exactly how to be. 240 miles an hour? What? That's why the Indy 500 matters. matters. Yeah, that was a really good video. I, um. Learned a lot there. Like I said, the first IndyCar race I watched this season was the Indy 500. Um, and that was like, I live streamed it as well on Twitch. Um, and you can literally see in my reaction and I'm like so stunned as to what's going on, especially in like the last few laps. New Garden's back on the scene. Oh my. New God is in the lead again. The crowd is going absolutely nuts. Oh, wow. New God and took the win. Wow. That was nuts. So now like watching this video and like learning more about it and why they do all the things they do in the Indy 500. Um, like I knew it mattered anyway, but learning like all the different things that happen during I was going to say the weekend, but it's like the month in May for them. And yeah, the bricks, why there's bricks there. I didn't know that that was why 
they had the like strip of bricks at the start and finish line. Um, didn't know that it was because the trick the track was originally made from bricks. Um, so that was crazy. And then that's why it's called the Brickyard. Didn't know that. Um, so I learned quite a bit there. It was a really good video, really enjoyed it. So with that being said, if you have any other videos that you'd like me to react to, drop them in the comments. I'm working my way through everybody's suggestions at the moment. If you did want to check out any of my other socials or become a Patreon member and get early access to videos like this, then you can do all of that down below. And if you want to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks, you could also do that by hitting the join button down below. But I hope you enjoyed today's reaction and I will catch you next time for the next one. Bye.